Hey everyone, welcome to Porcupine Gamers, where we're helping bring people together with all things tabletop. Today we're going to be covering the core rules of D&D and what it is. Um, in addition, we'll kind of be going over how to create your character, um, and I'm going to go over some tips on D&D Beyond, and kind of walk through that, and then maybe we'll play some, uh, some Neverwinter Nights or something. So... Um, let's start off here with kind of what I like to call the, uh, the simple rules of D&D. So rule number one, guys, have fun. Um, I made that the number one rule for a reason. I have tons of hardcore tabletop games filled with hype, super competitive rules, and strategies for winning. That's not what D&D is about. It's more of a shared, immersive story, so... Don't worry about that, just relax and have fun. Hydrogen and music is just loud. Uh, rule number two, um, basically don't stress. Um, I know a lot of people when they start out stress about creating big, long, arcing campaigns at first. Um, you know, trying to be the next whatever, M. Night Shyamalan. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, if you feel up to it, just go for it. Um, just jump in and try it. You don't have to uh, get too crazy about it, have scripts, dialogues, things like that. You just have the evil, big bad evil guys, what they call it, the BBEG, and he has some evil plan, and the characters have to go stop him. That's that's basically it. Um, especially when you're new and the players are new, um, hopefully they'll, they'll understand that we're not going to expect a whole lot or kind of go off script. Um, that's all you really need to do it. There's there's a lot of good stuff with the starter books. Um, that you can just follow a, a written down campaign, and then as you feel more comfortable, you can ad lib and add more things. Rule number three, the DM is always right. Um, maybe this should be number one. Um, but basically it's considered the rule zero of D&D. Um, if you're a player, just don't argue a ruling. Uh, even if it's wrong, you know the rules in and out. Um, oftentimes the DM has to just make a spot call. Just accept it, move on. It keeps things moving a lot faster. Um, the campaign will get bogged down otherwise. People will hate you. And if you're the DM, feel free to, uh, to ask advice if you're not sure. Make a note to look up said rule later, scenario. You can just put it in a quick note. and You can just roll a dice. Um, that's what I'll sometimes do. If I'm not super sure, I'll be, you know, evens or odds, one, two, or three, whatever. Roll, get your result, and you keep moving, and then no one really is upset, and it keeps the story moving. Uh, rule number four, you don't need to read every page cover to cover when I first looked at D&D, I was like, there is a lot going on here. But the real fact of the matter is you use very small amounts of, of the rules for, for play. Um, and they're not super complicated. If you can't remember them, don't worry. The goal is just to have fun. Uh, hence, the rule one. Um, I definitely recommend having a basic understanding of the rules. Uh, read it, skim it. I'm going to do a video um, coming up with the mechanics of D&D, what the stats mean, and just the basics you need to get a game going. Rule 5, KISS, a.k.a. Keep It Simple Smart Guy. Huh? Huh? I changed it there. Especially if you're starting out, you're not going to try to write some big, I wrote M. Night Shyamalan twist story here. Trust me, experienced players get bogged down ordering a drink at a tavern. It happens all the time. You've got the story you want them to follow on, and they run off going who knows where, which is fine. The simpler the story is, the easier it is to follow. Players will look for everything. If you describe a photo in the corner of the tavern, a painting, in too much detail, they're going to run off and follow it. So don't, don't worry too much about having a whole lot put into your story. And it should be easy. Um, I'm going to have another video also coming up with with kind of DMing. Um, and that's pretty much it. Those are the five rules. 
I'm going to put links in the description for um, my YouTube video. I'm going to have, I, I, there's just a lot of content I'm going to cover and working and doing that. So I apologize that I don't have more put here. But I'm going to do the breakdown for the player handbook, the stats, the classes, how to get started there. Then same for the dungeon master, the rules of the game. And then more and more fleshed out and kind of in-depth content for people that have played D&D a lot. This is the beginning of, of just a series I'm doing um, on D&D. But I, we're going to cover pretty much everything on, on the tabletop. Let's make a character here. Standard. Ooh, look at all these options we got here. We'll do this guy here. This is a cool dude. No, you know what? Let's uh, see what we got here. I'll do one of the basic ones. Let's do. Well, let's do a dwarf. I'm. I look like a dwarf right now, right? Where are you, dwarf? Dwarf, 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 dwarf. There we go. You you look like a dwarf. Let's try the fantasy name generator. Um, fantasy names, ba, 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 dwarf names. Scott Grick Onik Is that really a dwarf name? I'm trying to dwarves of D and D. That's a weird name, right? Here we go. Cardor. I like it. Cardor. Well, let's see. Do you have last names here? Come on. Let's give me a last name. You know, they do have the clan names in the player handbook. I can tell you that. Um, but we'll uh, do... Some of the hammer, shield, or axe basically is what you do. <laughs> so we'll do Cardor. Mm. Golden Brew. All right, so there we go. We got a name, got a face. So two ways you can do D&D. There's the milestone system and the XP system. Uh, essentially, that's up to your DM. Milestone, it's just whenever they decide to give you XP. It's good for campaigns where there's not a lot of combat, um, but you do want them to fight stronger bosses and things. I've got one campaign I'm running right now, which is in Ravenloft, and that campaign is kind of moving very quickly, and the players aren't fighting a lot of things. It's much more talking and going on quests and things like that. And so the best thing for them has been the milestone system. So as they do things, they earn levels, not XP. That helps them stay relevant to what they're fighting. And some people will argue it helps prevent murder hobos. Murder hobos, by the way, for the terminology, is when someone essentially is just killing everything because it gives them XP. Um, I like to do XP, personally. Yes, confirm. So leveling up, increase your points by a fixed value or manually roll. I like to do fixed. Um, the reason is whenever you level up, your class determines how much HP you have. And what that means is, is for example, fighters, um, paladins, things like uh, barbarians will have higher hit die. And then casters and wizards will have smaller hit die. So what that means is you'll get to roll... A D4, well, not a D4, but a D6 up to a D12. Obviously, higher numbers means more life. Um, so I do fix. That get, lets you take the average every level up. I like to stroot my beard. So now that you've done that, you've picked your XP, you've picked your hit point type. You can do encumbrance or non-encumbrance here. Oh, this is feet multi-class requirements. I, I allow you to do it. 
I mean, who doesn't want to have feats? Feats are basically things that characters can take whenever they level up um, at certain bracket points, and that will allow them to have advantages or sometimes just flavor stuff in the game. Multi-class requirements. Yes, what that means is, like I said, there's classes in D&D, which is essentially like a job. So you can be, you know, a wizard or a fighter or a paladin or a druid or a cleric. Multi-class requirements means that you have to have certain uh, numbers for certain stats. Strength, fighter class, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma for your casters. And that prevents people from essentially min-maxing and making the super guy that's the laser fighting fighter. People still do it, but the multi-class requirements means there's minimums for certain stats. Uh, encumbrance, basically you track the weight that you have, which means that if you've got backpack and you're carrying tons of goods and things you've looted for monsters and gold, all that has a weight. Um, variant encumbrance means it only tracks certain stuff, and you can also ignore coin weight, which I think everyone does. You, you don't want to be tracking all that stupid stuff. The program does that for you. In normal D&D, you'll have to track it yourself, and no one does. So, ability score or modifier display. You can reverse the arrangement of how it shows your stuff. Modifiers on top or the scores on top. And character privacy. So we'll let everyone see my character. So there he is, Cardor Golden Brew. He's going to be great. I'm, I'm excited. All right. Now I think because I've paid for nothing on this, I'm not going to be able to do all the options, but if you have paid for it, you can. Like I said, I, I use Fantasy Grounds. Um, but let's see what we want to make him. Well, we know what we're going to make him. We're going to make him a dwarf. Two types of dwarfs. Essentially, guys, whenever you look at any of these, like, look, like there's subclasses. Um, a lot of times, it's just a small stat bump. Um, I mean, for elves, the Dark Elf isn't even in there, but Dark Elves were considered evil. I know now, I guess... D and D's trying to make some changes to that. I don't know. It's a fantasy world, but they're trying to avoid the racisms in the fantasy world. So they're they're tweaking something with dark elves, which is a bummer. Because I thought it was cool that they were this dark evil elf version that lived underground. Um, but we'll see what they do. So let's be a mountain dwarf, and here it'll tell us. So a mountain dwarf. Bold, hardy, skilled warriors, miners, workers of stone and metal. So before we go any further, let's go over here and look what the uh, Helldorf says. Helldorf, skilled miners, workers of stone and metal. So what is the difference? Let's see what happens if I click this, if it explodes. There we go. So you can look right here, kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. So essentially, it matters for stats. That's it. A lot of people don't look at the role play aspect. I like to. So, gold dwarfs. The gold dwarfs of Farn and the. Or, no, sorry. Hill dwarfs. Or gold dwarfs, essentially. They used to be called gold dwarfs. Now they're called hill dwarfs. They're basically your, your classic dwarf. The mountain dwarf are the dwarves that like to live in the mountains. You couldn't have guessed that from the name, I'm sure. Um, they're just bigger dwarfs, essentially. Um, Basically, Wisdom, that's if I want to be a Caster Dwarf. Strength, that's if I want to be a Fighter Dwarf. That's all that means. Boop. I hope it saved my stuff here. Alright. So I want to be a Mountain Dwarf. And I can go down and you can see perks you get. Each, each race gets perks, which I also heard they're changing that as well. Um, I don't think they're going to do a new edition, but I do think they're going to make some updates. So dark vision, you can see right here what that means. Dim light within 60 feet as if it were bright light. Darkness as if it were dim light. That's important for when you're underground, obviously. So 
it's funny because whenever you're playing D&D, like everyone has dark vision and then humans just walk around tripping over stuff and falling in the dark. Basically, don't let that dis determine what race you pick. But if you're going to be doing something that's an underground campaign or an underdark campaign or even a dungeon where you think that might be a factor, keep in mind that your party members may or may not be able to see in the dark. So it's, it's something to consider. It's, it's nice to have. It's a nice little perk. Dwarven Resilience. I get advantage on saving throws against poison and have resistance against poison damage. Um, essentially what that means is not honestly not a lot's going to do poison damage, but if it does, you get resistance, you get half damage from, from poison damage, which is nice. And let's say the DM says, roll you, that drink you drank and the weird stranger offered you, you have to take a, uh, a poison saving throw. Uh, what that would mean is I would roll 2d20s, and whatever number was higher, I got to take that for my roll. Again, yeah, whatever. None of these are meant to be like super groundbreaking because you don't want to make everyone want to be just one race. Looking at you, Asimir. Uh, Aarakocra. <laughs> Some races are on paper better. I, I don't think you need to make your decision based on that, though. Um, proficiency with weapons. So battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, war hammer. That really doesn't matter. Generally, if you're picking a dwarf, you're going to pick someone that can fight with these weapons. I mean, if I was a cleric, then it, then it wouldn't matter. All right, so let's see here. Tool proficiency, proficiency with artists and tools of your choice. Again, this is more for role playing. Um, they tried to make tools in fifth edition more useful. Smith tools allow you to obviously smith. I believe it's weapons. There, there are certain tools that let you build certain things. Um, in fact, I can check that right now. I actually have ye old player handbook right here. So let's look at what that means. There's so many little minute things. That that's what you want this book for, honestly. You'll never use it for combat, but if I want to do make something, I want to see what it does. All right, so here under tools, and you probably can't even see that, but it's page 154. I'll tell you, I'm glad I don't have a beard like this, Ralph, because I'm constantly messing with it. It's just my nose. If I had a beard like this, though, that would be epic. I don't know if I can you know, keep the job I have right now, but who knows? With Corona, I'm working from home anyway, so who cares? <laughs> it's got Poisoner Kit, Thief Kit, Forgery Kit, Disguise Kit, Artisan Tool. But it doesn't have Smith Tools. That's interesting. You know, I bet it's in Xanathar's guide. Let's look. Boop. Oh, you know what? Look, sorry, I can't pull it up there, but looks like they got it here on D&D Beyond. Here you go. Smith's tools. These special tools include the items to pursue a craft or trade. Proficiency in artisan tools lets you add your proficiency to the check. <laughs> it, it doesn't say. So I guess then Smith Tools is broad strokes for a type of artisan tool you can pick. Sound good? I'll agree. Sound good? Good. Oh, it says it there as an artisan tool. I'm going to say it makes weapons. I'm making a DM call right now. You can make weapons. Brewer supplies, I know that. You can make alcohol. Um, again, Xanathar's Guide has a lot of good stuff on that, which I wonder if it's got it in here. Let's try it. Brewer. Yeah, 
Yeah, look at that. They're keeping it secret because we don't have Xanathars. If you guys do get other books besides the main ones, I definitely recommend Xanathars. It's got a ton of new stuff for your backgrounds and for using things like this, these tools that basically were for flavor. You can actually craft stuff now. There's different quality of what you craft. You can sell it. If it's alcohol, it makes it better. You know, it's kind of fun. Uh, Mason's tools, obviously, the castle's under attack. The walls get knocked out. You got Mason tools. You can help repair the wall. Stone cunning. I can make a history check, and I can basically tell you everything about the rocks. <laughs> um, I mean, not super great, but if you're trying to figure out where the lich's hidden base is, where he hid his phylactery, and you find a stone on the ground, and the, I'm the dwarf, and I pick it up, and I do a history check, and if it came from the place where the lich came from, I could tell them. I'd be like, hey... This looks like it's Mesopotamian in origin. Uh, Dwarven armor training, training, proficiency in light and medium armor. Again, whatever. But we're picking them. We like them. All right. So there we are. We got our stuff. Let's pick my Dwarven artisan tool. Uh, I'm going to make smith because I can make armor. Or at least we can get an answer for what, what I can actually make. All right, class. So if we go back here, let me, let me go back. So I'm going to get plus two constitution. And I'm going to get plus two strength, right? So clearly a fighter is what we'll be. Oh, no. Why did you make me go back? All right, here we go. So I've got some options. Uh, with the con and the strength buff, though, I'm going to be a barbarian. So if you look, I get the biggest hit die in the game. Um, if you want to be a tank with high AC, the barbarian is not the way to go. If you want to have a large health pool, but really not have a lot of AC, that's what the Barbarian is. Otherwise, you could be a fighter or a paladin. Um, I don't want to mess with spells. I don't want to mess with a fighter because I just want to run around angrily punching things. So that is what we're going to do. Now, a Barbarian, if you look, every class has class features. Um, so I get to do Rage. Let's see what Rage means. So if you look, advantage on strength saving throws, strength checks. If I make a melee attack with strength, I can add bonus dies, I gain in levels, I can add Rage damage. But this is the reason you Rage, right there. You have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Essentially what it means is I'm going to take half damage for anything that's uh, in, in combat. With, with stabbing, with slashing, with hitting. Magic. I'm a barbarian. I, I don't care. Rage lasts a minute. It ends early if you're knocked out. Once you've raged the number of times shown on your barbarian table, you must finish a long rest before you can rage again. Um, which I assume it's going to show us our rage table later. Anyway. So, besides that, this is why I said you're not going to have good AC. Your armor uh, class is basically if they can hit you or not. It's not necessarily like what you're wearing. It's how efficient you are in combat at not getting smacked. So my armor class is going to be 10 plus dex, and that's pretty common across the board for everybody. It's just a flat 10 plus dex, and then you add armor. For a Barbarian, because it's unarmored defense, I don't wear armor, so I'm running around naked. Um, which, again, remember why they said we have proficiency in armor? We don't care. We're not wearing armor. Uh, plus con, and that's why we like our dwarf that we picked. Because we're going to get buffs to our constitution on top of us picking it. I hope it's going to let us do point by. 
There's two ways you can do your stats in D&D. There's point by, and then there's rolling for it. Um, rolling for it, I don't like. You can get screwed. Generally, when people are screwed, they suicide their character until they can roll a better one, um, which defeats the purpose. Um, in addition, if you do point by, you're going to have X amount of points to spend, um, and everything's flat starts at 8. So it makes you a little more well-rounded character rather than a min-maxed derpus. Reckless attack. This looks like a whole bunch of words. Essentially all it means is I get advantage on my attacks if I'm using strength, and then you get advantage against me because I'm just flailing around like an idiot. Uh, danger sense, it's pretty fun to have. Essentially what it means is as I'm walking along and someone says roll for a trap or roll for a spell, I'm going to have advantage to avoid it. And, pretty cool, you can't be blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. Primal Path at third level. So this is pretty common for everyone. It's, it's, it's your class feature, essentially, is what you get at level three. Um, for clerics, they pick domains. For druids, they pick what circle they belong to. Uh, for fighters, they pick what kind of fighter they are. Um, for monks, they pick what way they worship. The way of the platypus. Um, uh, wizards, pick what school, uh, etc. Et it basically lets you branch more for what type of class you are, um, which is pretty great. Hey, welcome. Feet? Is it feet? <laughs> Hello. Um, I was just talking, I didn't even notice. So next we've got ability score improvements. This is not unique to the Barbarian. This is everyone. Everyone and at these points, 4th, 8th, 12th, 16th, etc. Um, get an ability bump. Generally you can plus one score by two or pick a feat if you're using the feat rule. I, I don't know why some people hate feats. They're not that powerful. Uh, and generally if I'm given the choice... I'm not going to take a feat. I, I like to bump my stats, but some classes do benefit. They, they become better with feats. So here we go. Ability score improvement. And look over here. Ability score improvement. Ability score improvement. It's, it's saying the same thing for each level, which is redundant. So let's just get rid of all those. Thank you. I know. I understand the concept. Okay. Extra attack. So fighters, paladins, rangers. Um, barbarians, I think that's that, for all the, the martial-based classes, get bonus attacks. Um, fighters can also get an action surge where they get extra attacks. So barbarians, they're still fighters, so they do get the 5th uh, level attack twice. Essentially what that means is, when I spend my attack action, I attack twice. That's important to note. Attack action, attack twice during your attack action. Some people confuse that. Uh, fast movement, starting at 5th level, I am faster if I'm not wearing armor. If you're a barbarian, don't wear armor. I mean, that's it. You can clearly see there's benefits for not wearing armor. If you wanted to wear armor, you should have been a paladin or a fighter. <laughs> Feral instincts. By 7th level, your instincts are so honed that you have advantage on initiative rolls. I mean, meh. Additionally, if you are surprised at the beginning of combat and aren't incapacitated, you can act normally. But only if you enter rage before doing anything. Okay. Basically what that means, translated into normal speak, is normally if there's a, a surprise round, essentially that means that you were camping or something, or walking and talking and didn't pay attention, the monster's got a drop on you. Normally they get a surprise around a combat, which means all the monsters will get a go and beat the living tar out of you before you get your turn. Um, so this says if you're surprised and incapacitated, you can basically still take your turn, but only if you rage. So you're going to go, all right, I'm raging. 
Just chance to let you get hit. Uh, brutal critical. At ninth, you roll one additional damage dice when doing a, uh, extra damage for a crit. This basically works based on your DM. Um, they can determine its flat double damage and max damage. Um, or generally you just roll an extra of your weapon damage die. So if I'm attacking with 2d8, um, I get to add 3d8. This would add 4d8, um, et cetera, et cetera. You can see this is what's called a, a stacking ability, which means that basically it's going to get stronger as you level up. Two additional level 13, three additional, and that's total. So you're not going to add one, then two, then three, and a total of six extra dice. It's just three by level 17. Uh, so it's saying the same thing. Ninth and then 13th and then 17th. Um, also, most of these classes are going to get the same kind of like equal amount of things. So even though that looks like a lot, Brutal Critical was one thing. Um, Fast movement is at 5, Feral Instinct is at 7, and most classes will have that. They'll have a 5th level, a 3rd level, a 7th level, a ninth level. I mean, you can see the pattern. Relentless Rage, starting the 11th level, you're basically so pissed off that even if you're dropped to 0, you jump back up. You can make a con save if, and remember you have advantage on con saves, you make a con save of 10, which is pretty much impossible to fail that. You're rolling two dice. And shouldn't knock on wood, but you've got a pretty good chance of popping back up, which is pretty great. Persistent Rage. 50th level, your basically rage is so fierce, it ends early only if you fall unconscious or if you choose to end it. So if you remember before, if we go up here for rage, it lasts one minute, it ends if you're knocked out early. Um, or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked. That's basically the, the caveat there. If you haven't attacked a hostile creature or taken damage. Now, with Super Rage, it, it's going to keep going unless you get knocked out. Indomitable Might. Now, this is getting to where it basically rewards you for staying that class. So if you've picked Barbarian... I don't know what you might multi-class into. I've seen some interesting builds, but you're going to go all the way to level 20. I've seen Barbarian Druids, um, which is pretty fun, but that's that's about it. Uh, level 18, my total for a strength check is less than my strength score. I can use that score, which is great, because by level 18, I'm just going to take take what my strength is. Just starting out, I know my strength is going to be probably 18. So, yeah. I, <laughs> you're, you're never going to fail a strength check, was, is what that means. I can punch a, a dragon in the face. Alright, Primal Champion. This is your level 20 skill. You're, you've stayed till level 20, you get this. Some of them are really great, some of them are kind of meh. But, this one I think is pretty cool. At level 20, you embody the power of the wilds. Your strength and con scores jump by 4. And your max is now 24. Before, you, you couldn't go above 20. Now you can. This is your proficiencies. It's basically all the weapons, all the martial weapons. Strength and con is boosted. And then I get to pick two skills. Uh, of these, depends on what your party needs. But as a Barbarian, uh, I'm going to take Intimidation, and I'm going to take Athletics, maybe Survival. But those are the things I'm going to do. Uh, and then finally, remember what I was saying about your hit die you roll for your life? So we're going to start at 12 plus Con, right? It's easy for any character. You're going to start with your max hit die plus your Con modifier. After that, it's going to be your dice plus your Con. So, essentially what they'll do is, like if you don't have the book or just want to try to remember, it's going to be an average if you don't roll it. So, oh my gosh, go away. So, basically they add 1. So, the average, obviously, of 12, the min between is 6. 
they make it seven. They 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 give you one more, which is nice. All right, we got our barbarian. What what? Let's pick our proficiencies. I'm gonna pick athletics, and I'm gonna pick intimidation. Athletics means if I want to do some fancy run, vault the wall, uh, parkour, any of that, that's athletics. Uh, and intimidation is basically I'm going to come up and threaten to get answers or to get my way, is what intimidation is. The other side of that is if I was doing um, persuasion. There's two ways in D&D for you to get what you want outside of combat in talking. It's intimidation, which is the threat of force by, like, it even specifies that you have to, like, put hands on the person. Um, while persuasion is just, you know, you chat with them. They may, maybe they come around. So there we go. Here's all my stuff available at higher levels. And this shows me everything I get later. Boop. All right. I'm a level one barber. Oh, hey. I don't want a milestone. Oh well. Next. So here it is. Manual I can put it in. Standard array or point by. Let's do point by. So like I said, you're going to start with 8 flat. And then you're going to basically spend these points. Now as you spend them, things get more expensive. So watch. So let me do... So like it's one point to go there, two points to go there, three points to go there, four points to go there. Okay, with you so far. Five points, and then it jumps. You see that? So to go above 13, it costs two for that buy and two for that buy additionally. Um, but that's fine. We're going to do that. We're going to do strength, and we're going to do con. As a barbarian, those are your two favorites. Uh, con and strength. Uh, intelligence is a dump stat. Dex is probably my second favorite. So let's see what I end up. I like to go to 10. We're going to keep myself dumb. We're going to keep those low. Uh, I just hate being dumb as a potato. I mean, if you're role playing in the party and people are like, hey, what do you think? Like I, I've played D&D a lot. I'm a pretty smart guy. I've DM'd, but my character, unfortunately, has the brain of a turnip. So you've got to kind of keep that in mind. If you're, if you're going to roleplay in a roleplaying game, uh, make your stats reflect that. So I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm not saying that's smart. It is smart, though. But I'm not saying that's the wise choice in D&D. Um, I don't need charisma. I don't need wisdom, but I want intelligence so my character can have a little bit of a brain. There we go. I put as much as I could into decks. So now when we go over here, you can see all our stats boop, 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 and what the modifiers mean. Plus, I get a racial bonus here, boop, which is great. No racial bonus. Racial bonus. And there we are. Looking good. I know, I know my name. Oh, man, guys. I forgot his name. Krugner? Brugger? Craig? Oh, I forgot his name. Oh, I gotta make one. Kragnor! That was pretty close to what it was, right, guys? Golden... I think I, think I named him Gold, Golden Brew, right? Kragnor! Golden! I uh, know. Now that he's a barbarian, I need a more barbarian name. Dragonbane. And only have to earn Dragonbane, because that means you killed a dragon. But my character's backstory is going to be that he was a dwarf that was actually raised by the wolf clan barbarians that lived up near Icewind Dale. And they killed a white dragon that attacked them, and it was Kragnor's axe that did the killing blow. You can get the XP for it, obviously, because he's still level 1, but... The, the DM was spiteful, I guess. He didn't like the way I killed him. <laughs> All right, so backgrounds. 
this will give you perks uh, read them know what they are I'm going to do a soldier because it will give me more buffs that I like it's going to be important to note just because you pick these skills they're still going to roll off stats and my stats for certain things are bad so you need to keep that in mind animal handling I'm going to do just because it makes sense because I was a barbarian out in the middle of nowhere and we're going to do survival. I play three dragon antium. I'm a, I'm a, I've got 10 intelligence as a barbarian, so I, I play a few games. And now you basically get to pick role playing things. No, I don't really like this. I don't like soldier. Is Sage better? There's normally more backgrounds, but unfortunately I don't have them. I wanted to do Hermit, but Hermit's not on here for some reason. Mm. I don't like that one either. None of these really fit my background. Let's do a custom background. All right. I'm going to put outcast slash orphan. Tribe was killed. I tried. That's wrong. Clan, because I'm a dwarf, was wiped out by... Working of an evil warlord. I don't remember much, but I was taken in by the wolf clan, wolf tribe. Our brains are tribes, dwarves are clans. I'm raised as one of their own as a child. Then I've left it kind of vague. You could work with your DM and things with your backstory. The more you write and flesh out your character, the more the DM, if he's up to it, can kind of work that into the story. And it makes it more personal, and you're more vested in your in your character. All right, I'm gonna pick two skills, two tools. There we go. Now I've already picked athletics. Oh, I'm sorry. Earlier I said parkour. Acrobatics is parkour. Athletics is just being athletic, obviously. Um, so I'm going to do acrobatics. Mm, medicine, because I'm a, was a barbarian. And for tools. Um, cook utensils. I learned how to cook. And I can play the drum. But not like a hippie. Not a hippie, I'm a barbarian. More like war drums. Alignment. So alignment is essentially for role-playing reasons, it, it hasn't mattered as much for your class in 5th edition. <sighs> Essentially what that means is kind of motivation for your character. I'm sure you've seen the memes, but lawful 
neutral and chaotic is kind of how you view your certain viewpoint, which is evil, good, or neutral. Um, chaotic generally is more within how you pick rather than a written law. Um, so if that doesn't make sense. Um, chaotic good, I'm a good person, but let's say that they say there's no stealing, but I go and steal to give bread to you know, the starving family of orphans that I found or something like that. A lawful good would not do that necessarily because they follow the law. Again, there are exceptions. It's your own code, and we're talking morality, which, as you've learned in philosophy and things like that, is defined by the individual. But an easy rule of thumb is lawful, you have a strict code, um, but you also follow the laws of the land or the area if you're lawful good. Kind of good, you set your own rules. Um, evil, don't be an evil character. I know some people like to do it. If you are going to be evil, be lawful evil, which basically means your viewpoint may shift away from the collective norm, but you can basically control yourself enough to follow basic rules and at least not interfere with the well-being of the group. Chaotic evil is like a, a, a demon. So you're, you basically kill a murder and light babies on fire and do whatever because of whatever. Um, people like to do chaotic neutral and just, I randomly set that villager on fire. I was bored. You know? Things like that. It's just to cause problems. If your whole group's fine with that, do it. But pick good. Pick neutral. Um, pick lawful evil. But otherwise, don't do it. A neutral, they got rid of true neutral. But neutral basically means that you generally believe in balance. Druids will be neutral. Um, a lot of times a neutral of evil or good won't get involved unless, you know, that it... it it's something they believe puts things out of their view of balance. Um, neutral good will do the right thing, uh, but won't go out of their way to do so. So if the king's like, help, I need you guys to go on an adventure, to go help my daughter who's trying to secure the granary, I don't know. Anyway, something like that that may help the kingdom... The kingdom's out in dire straits. The neutral good's like, yeah, I'm not really going to do that. The lawful good would be like, I'm duty bound, sir. And the cut of good's like, yeah, I can see that helping. I'm, I'm fine with helping orphans. Um, but my character, I'm going to be cat good. That's my favorite one. Here you go. Acts as their conscience strikes for little regard of what others expect. There you go. Like I said, demons. Arbitrary. Let's see how they describe neutral. Many monks and wizards. Like I said, they're, they're not really getting involved. True neutral. Anyway, most human beings in society don't know how to role play those things. Most, sometimes they're sociopaths. And then you got to worry about those guys. Faith, I'm going to serve Tempest, who is the god of battle. Lifestyle, uh, I was poor. I don't, I don't need money, so I don't care. A lot of people will be like, I was an aristocrat. But no, I'm poor. This is a description for my character. I'm going to be bald except a mohawk. Is that how you spell mohawk? That's not how you spell mohawk. Mohawk. There we go. Skin is tan. Eyes are blue. Height. Um, they generally have averages for these guys. Let's see here. The dwarf details. Here we go. Stand well under four, five feet. 
So barely five feet. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be four ten? Four ten? That's pretty eh, that's short. <laughs> All right, I'm four ten. Says their weight is sometimes double a human, so they used to have a way to roll these things. Let's see if I can find it in the old player handbook since they're keeping secrets from us here. Now, if you've got the book, generally you can go through this exactly like I'm doing on here. On here, they have apps. Like I said, I'll, I'll show everyone Fantasy Grounds. That's the one I use. Essentially, only one person has to pay for it. Um, the, the licensed version and all the books and then everyone else has access. Hopefully your group can chip in. Um, I've had some people help me a little bit, but generally you, you pay for it all by yourself. If you're invested in D&D, it's worth it, right? Um, so I'm going to weigh eh, 250. Dwarves are longer lived. I'm sure it says that here too. There you go. They're considered young until they reach the age of 50. Live up to 350 years. So basically, what that means is. I'll be 30. I'm a young dwarf. My jail owner is not caps locked, apparently. Male. Alright. These are important. These are your personality, ideals, bonds, and flaws that you can roll. Let's make it random here. Well, roll it for me. It's not going to roll it for me, is it? Well, since I picked my own up here, background is uh, it's not letting me roll those. So, what you could do, again, Xanathar's has a lot more. Um, I, I'm just going to make my own. My personality trait, I am gruff and taciturn. I don't like the indoors. Ideals, strength is gained through dedication. I believe people should work to overcome their weaknesses. Bonds. So the bond is like, this is like my driving thing. This is what it's about for me. So I'm going to do... Uh, 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 uh. Driven to find a man who killed my family. Hey, it's there. It's been used a lot because it works, all right? Flaws. I refuse aid even when I... Ah, uh, yeah, I can't type. Even when I need it. And we've all been there. We're, we've all been prideful, stubborn people, right? But dwarves and barbarians combined. I'm just going to be very much about, I can do it myself. Kind of try to remember these things. It gives flavor to your people. And maybe you don't necessarily know how to role play outside of you. So pick stuff that's you. So when you do it, it's what your character would do. Please don't write something that is disruptive to the group and then be like, oh, that's how my character is. Because really, in real life, you're sitting here with your friends, right? But in the game, why would they hang around with this guy who's just being, you know, an expletive? <laughs> they, they wouldn't. 
they'd kill you or they'd abandon you. They wouldn't travel with you because, you know. So just keep that in mind. All right, organization. Let's see here. Yeah. This is what organization I'm affiliated with. I'm just going to be the Wolf Tribe. A lot of times people will put the Harpers, they'll put, you know, the Xanathar's Guild, they'll put the Zentarum. It's different groups that exist in D&D, essentially like mob families. But I will have none of that because I'm a barbarian dwarf. My allies, not really. My enemies. The warlord who killed my clan. I really hope I fight this warlord now because I hate this guy. I'm so invested, just this little bit I've typed. <laughs> Backstory, you can put it there if you don't remember. I always keep it up here. So, And that, and that's the way it was. Ooh, look, you can track your attuned magic items. Um, certain magic items require attunement. What it basically means is you've sat and meditated with it 24 hours, and now you are one with it, and you can use it, and it's magic. For balance reasons, you can have three of them at once. Choose equipment or gold. Uh, I choose equipment, like everyone. A great axe, obviously. Um, simple weapon... I'm going to pick crossbows. I have some range. Boop. Wait, 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 Ooh, look at all these things you can add. But you'd have to get authorization from your DM because this goes outside of your starting equipment. So export to a PDF. Click to download. All right, let's see what this guy looks like. Boom. So we've made a sheet. We could print this. We could go play right now with, with our stuff. Okay, so we have our guy made here. Pretty easy. Start a campaign! The campaign of evil! Let's see here now. Got our notes, got our link. Can I add stuff into it? Ooh, look at this. Subscribe now. Interesting. All right, but I don't care about that. Let's go over here now to ye old steam. I will show you guys what I use. So this is called Fantasy Grounds. It's very similar to D&D Beyond, things like that. Um, you'll have to update it. Um, if you look, it says found 43 purchases. All the books and everything I have are downloaded there. Um, I won't say it's cheaper than D&D Beyond, but I honestly think it is. Um, being that Steam will do sales, and I have not seen D&D do them. The total summary for those books, I think they are 30 bucks a piece. Let's see here with Steam what they would be. 
Uh, I, I got them on Steam, but this, the Unity one, you can just download by itself. And if you guys download the demo um, and you message me, let me know. I'm going to start doing a streaming campaign. I just kind of walk people through stuff. Uh, so let's see here. Fantasy Grounds. Looks like the Monster Manual was 30 bucks. Player Handbook was 30 bucks. You know, I'm betting that Wizards of the Coast sets these prices, honestly. Descent and Avernus, 30 bucks. All right. So, the exact same price. So, if you haven't started it um, and you're trying to decide which one, I can demo for you Fantasy Grounds. Um, I'm working on getting some some sponsorships with with D and D Beyond. So if they'll just give me a copy to to demo, um, but I can't afford to <laughs> spend seven hundred bucks, obviously. So let's go here. Let's ba -ba -ba. we'll just do create a campaign. The demo campaign. Uh, I picked 5th edition rules. I can make a password. I can make it cloud or LAN. Uh, I'm going to make the LAN game. You'll need to give them this number here, right here. Internal 10.0.0.6. So if you're there and you download it, you can try to join me right here. It was 10.0.0.86. Show on load. Boop, exit. Boom. All right, so here it is. Here's the background. All kind of, There's so much to go over with this program. But let's say you're joining and you're just trying to create a character. Click PCs here. You click Add. And let's go over here to our guy we made. I got him over here on the other screen, so I'm just going to weasel him over here. So shrink him down here. Ta-da! There we go, we'll just copy it here. So, I'm going to need to open the books here. So I go to Modules. And these are all the books I own. So what I have to do is, if you green check mark them, the players are allowed to see them. Um, and if you open them, they'll, they'll have access, you'll and them will have access to them if they have a green check mark. So since I'm technically the DM on this one, uh, I can do everything. So I'm going to go here. Ba, 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 ba. I'll load the DM for players. I'll load the DM for me. Now what I'll normally do, since I have a good gaming computer and two monitors, I'll I'll show you guys my whole setup for, for what I do when I run sessions. But this is what I use. All right, let's see here. We'll load the monster manual. Mordecai ends, obviously. All these supplemental books I load. Now you'll notice there's two versions. There's Mordecai ends players, Mordecai ends not players. And that's so that the player part of the book they can read, but that's it. Which is good, because let me tell you, players. Always trying to get into things. Player handbook load.
Um, I guess I'll load Sword Coast. Sword Coast did add some races you can play. I can't remember which ones, but we'll add it. I have the Tortle package. The Tortle package. <laughs> um, because eventually I'm going to play a Tortle. I'm really excited. I have a plan to do a Ninja Turtle campaign. It's going to be awesome. Volos! Volos the other one you want. Uh, Volos lets you play a bunch of different monster races. So, Gith, Hobgoblin, uh, Goblins. Um, I heard rumor... There's a new thing coming out where you can play like a half a Lithid because of Baldur's Gate 3. I don't know. I think that's not out yet, though. Um, I do have... This is Old Eberron. They have a new one, the... Uh, the Last War, or Fall of the Last War. They kind of tweaked Warforged, Changeling, Shifters, things like that are all in it. Um, I have not bought it yet, though. Xanathar's is the one I was telling you, the big one. Xanathar's is great. There we go. The Crypt Fumble Hit Tables, this is great. You can find them everywhere. Basically what it does is whenever you roll a 1 or a 20, It'll automatically calculate if it's just a normal fumble fail or if some effect happens. It just spices things up. All right, we're done. Now look, now I got my books here, okay? So I'm going to click Player Handbook. I'm going to click Races. In fact, let me show you this way. Pretending we were starting from scratch here. Let me... Let me move this guy over here on this side. And I'll, I'll replicate what I did. So here I can click Dwarf. I can read everything that's in the book right here. Okay. Here's all the traits. You can click each shield and read them. Ability score. Okay. So all I'm going to do is drag this over. Right. Boom. Now see, this has more of them. See? It's got gold, mountain, hill, shield, gray dwarf, um, which is Durgar. The reason it has multiples here is because different books have these in there. Um, but I'm going to do mountain. That's what I am. Check mark. Boom. And if you look on the left, you can see that it's got everything there that I get. Dwarven resilience, stone cunning, my base speed, all that. Okay? Now I've got that. Now I'm going to go over here. Sorry, I shouldn't have closed this. And go to class. Now if you notice, it already assigned me my modifiers for my strength and my con here. Uh, that's important if you go later to roll or something. Just remember, it's already tweaked it for you. Drag over Barbarian. Boom! Choose your two skills. So what did I pick last time? I picked Intimidation and Athletics. Okay. There it is. Now I have the Outlander background. Boop. There we go. Now if you're wondering what that is, you can click the shield. Okay. Athletics and Survival, it gives me a language of my choice um, and a type of musical instrument. And it gives me a feature. Wanderer, I have an excellent memory for maps, geography, and general layout of terrain. I can find food and fresh water for myself and five other people each day, uh, provided the land basically has something for me to get. Now, I'm going to go down here, go to Weapon List. Now, it gives me here, look, same thing D&D Beyond did. So here's my inventory. I'm going to drag over what I want, which is a Great Axe. Boop. Simple Weapon, which I picked a Crossbow. Boop. 
Uh, you'll want to grab the bolts. Don't forget to do that. Um, that's in our adventuring gear. You get 20 crossbow bolts, an explorer pack, and four javelins. So let's go down here. Explorer pack. Boom! And then my four javelins, which I think are on the other list. Yeah, they're on the other list. Right here. Javelin. And then go over to the number and change it to four. There's my four javelin. And it's got tools, which I believe. Do I get a set of tools? Did I get a set of tools on you over here? Cragnor. Oh yeah, I did because I did my made up background, but this time I didn't, so I'm not gonna do that. If you're ever gonna try to check this again, it's right here. You can click the shield, you can read what you got, okay? My tool is a musical instrument, that's what it is. Which I picked to be a drum. Boop. All right, so that's it. I'm done there. All right, so now I can open these. Oh, you know what? These are probably locked. There we go. So here are double click these bags to open them. And let's see if we got a uh, barbarian looking dwarf. There we go. Oh, that says it's a paladin. Yeah, that guy looks like a barbarian. Boom. Now I'm going to get... I just added these buttons on the side. Um, assets. Dwarf. Let's see what kind of pictures we got here. Now the DM will have to unlock these. Normally you have to do um, the DM has to do this. I'm um, going to unlock it. So I'll generally just let my players be like describe it and I'll try to find a good token for them. Hmm. Let's try this. Barb. There we go. Not a lot of good options, huh, guys? Mm. Oh, you know what? I don't think I opened all mine. Let's go over here to modules. I bought some extra. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's open the Unearthed Arcana. I also did this. So I have Unearthed Arcana. Um, some DMs will let you use it, some won't. It's basically beta testing stuff for D&D. &D. Where are the extra pictures at? Hmm. That's it. All right, I'll work with what I got. Type in dwarf. Hmm. Dwarf rogue, dwarf scout, dwarf beggar. All right, that's my dude. Mm, yeah, yeah, he looks closest. I like him. Now for my stats, I'm going to go over here. Let's type this in. Cragnor. 
Dragonbane. There he is. Stats, we're going to type in 17, tab 14, tab 17, tab 10, tab 8, tab 8. And there we are. So look, it's got my stat plus my con, so that is 7 plus 3, 7, 8, or sorry, 12. So this is wrong because it's going to be, you got to watch for this. So it didn't know what my stats were because I didn't do stats first. If I had done stats and then dragged over uh, Dwarf and Barbarian, it would have changed this. But keep in mind that it adds, like I showed you, that plus two strength, plus two con. So if you do point by, just keep in mind it'll add it twice. So that makes it 12 plus 3, which is 15. And that's pretty much it. We got a guy created now. So what you'll do is you'll go over here if you're the DM. Boom! He's in the combat tracker now. And here's the party. Boom! He's in the party now. Okay. Now as the DM, this is where you can assign gold. You can choose the combat order. Them over here. And XP assigned for the party here. I will show everyone that in the future in another video. But that's basically the, the rundown on how to make a character. Just starting out on either setting on Fantasy Grounds or D&D &D Beyond. Hey everybody, we hope you enjoyed the video today, and if you'd like to see more D&D and tabletop related content, hit the like and subscribe button for more videos in the future. And we'd love to connect with you and the community in the comment section below, and talk about kind of what you're looking forward to with D&D. And now, for the takeouts. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the... Yeah. <laughs> what? Whoa. Today we're going to be... Take a deep breath. <gasps> right as I go into it. That's good. Uh, don't use that. Cut. Hey everyone, and welcome to Porcupine Gamers, where we're helping bring people together by looking over at the teleprompter. Hey everyone, welcome to Porcupine Gamers, where my beard comes down over my face.